Hi everybody. Today I'm going to be tying a, a really fish catching fly, which is like you know pretty much what I like to say with with all the flies that I tie. But the the fly that I'm going to be tying today is created by a gentleman by the name of John Barr. You probably already know John Barr if you do any fly tying or fly fishing already. You may not know him by name, but you probably know one of his most famous patterns, and it's called the Copper John. It's a true you know fish catching pattern simply because it gets down to the bottom and it attracts fish. So it's a pattern that a lot of guys, it's their go-to number one fly, simply because it, it always catches fish. This is another excellent fly that I'm bringing to your attention, and it's called the Meat Whistle. A quite interesting name. Um, you'll see once I start tying it, there's a lot of components to this fly, and uh, it, it really can seem like a more complicated fly. It's not whenever you break it down step by step. I'm going to do my best to really show you every single step and try to explain everything along the way. The pattern can be found in John Barr's book. It's called Bar Flies. It was published in 2007. It's a great book. And aside from seeing the Copper John and this Meat Whistle, he has some other patterns that are really, you know, great fish catching patterns. But the best part about this book is that the photography is excellent. He does a great job going step by step and explaining what goes into each of the steps. So I'll be, you know, I'll be tying that Meat Whistle today, and I'll be telling you a little bit about the fly as I'm tying it. I do want to give you a couple heads up about the fly before I actually go into it. Um, first of all, I'm going to be using a hook made by Allen Fly Fishing. Um, Allen Fly Fishing is, you know, a company that's really seemed to have been seemed to have been rising over the last few years because they've been doing really great things. And this hook is definitely another one of those great things they've been doing. The hook is a jig hook. Uh, you're going to notice that when I'm tying it, I'm going to be flipping the hook over at different points. Um, but the the really the main thing to recognize with this hook is that these hooks are excellent because they they're going to be riding with that point up that. And whenever you have that point up, you have a you, you you greatly reduce the chances of snagging that hook on something. And because you put a lot of time into some of these flies, especially this meat whistle, whenever you're tying these, you don't want to lose a lot of those. So I will be recommending that you're fishing this with around 3x, 2x, 1x. John Barr recommends a 0x fluorocarbon monofilament. I'm not saying to go that extreme because he does fish you know very very wide rivers compared to some of the ones that I fish. But I will say you don't want to, you know, hesitate in going with a little heavier tippet with this because there's a lot of work involved in this fly and it tends to really catch fish. They don't seem to shy away from it, especially with fluorocarbon. So when we go back to that, that Allen jig hook, it's going to be riding um, with that point up. So it's going to really reduce those chances of getting snagged. Um, so you really can, you know, concentrate on fishing it. A couple other really, you know, interesting characteristics with these hooks. They are extremely sharp. Uh, when I first started tying with them, you know, I jagged my fingers a number of times. I was just really so surprised at how sharp they are, um, and then they're also um, barbless. And I will put a little link to their their website um, down in the comments section, so you can immediately, you know, see some of the stuff um, that that they're offering right now. Um, the other really neat part about this fly, this this um, bars meat whistle, is whenever you fish it, this is not a streamer that you're want to get. You're going to be wanting be just you know casting straight against the bank and stripping in and getting those fish to come after it. You will catch fish like that. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind. However, with this style of hook and with this type of pattern, you're going to want to fish this underneath an indicator. This is more of an indicator rig type fly. Um, this is one of those flies that you're going to have as your point fly and tied off the bend of it. You're going to have a little pheasant tail, a little bead head, a little tungsten bead, something else drifting behind it. Um, this fish, this fly will capture the fish's attention. Attention, I promise you that. But if enough, if not, if they don't take it, they will at least be looking in that direction and see your other nymph come floating along behind it. Thus, whenever you're, you know, you're dead drifting these, if you're um, using a check style, um, a, a check style setup with this, and you have that indicator on, or you're using something as your indicator, this is definitely the hook that's really gonna, you're gonna want to have for your point fly. Um, I'll be telling you a little bit more about this hook um, before tying the pattern. In fact, I'll, um, I'll give me a minute. I'll, I'll explain some other characteristics of the hook. I'll show you some of the materials that I'm going to use. And then finally, I will um, list all the materials and actually get into the actual tutorial for this pattern. So again, this is the Bars Meat Whistle, if I haven't said that enough, uh, tied on one of the Allen Fly Fishing hooks. Um, so let me first show you a little bit more about this hook. Okay, for starters, here is the, um, the Allen Fly Fishing Jig Hook. If you take a look at this, it's really nice because you don't have to worry about bending down a barb, so you, you're really not worried at that point. Um, it's a very sharp hook. I mean, if you try to, uh, you know, attempt to scrape it against your, your fingernail, and it's probably tough for me to try doing this in this location, you can see it, it jags instantly. There's no, there's no worry about sharpening, sharpening anything like that. Um, 
it's got that jig profile and I'll just show you one thing before I go into some of the other materials this little section of it right here that's going to be for tires that's going to be that one area you're going to really want to concentrate concentrate on because there's lots of different things you can do in this area this is where you can add your tungsten bead um, your cone you can simply just begin tying and, and I'll show you where the recommended tie-in point is for this type of a hook um, and then in this case I'm going to be using a cone head that's what John Barr recommends for this pattern so you'll notice that I will be using a cone head for this pattern and I'll show you how it really um, just works out perfectly with this with this jig hook this is a size 8 um, I will, um, you know, at some point I'll probably be tying some other flies with some smaller sizes and show you some of the different nymphs you can tie with this hook. What's nice about it, since it rides, it, you know, the nicest thing about it is it rides hook up. You know, it's, again, it's really just meant for those, um, for that indicator rigging whenever you're fishing. But the great part about this, about this hook is that, and, and the one characteristic I want to point out about it is because it rides hook up, a lot of people tend to tie flies like this. So they'll have the wing case and everything going along along that, that point. You'll have maybe a scud back or anything like that. But with this fly, you don't have to worry, or with this hook, you don't have to worry about that. You're really going to want to use those all-purpose nymphs that you that will look the same and will pretty much be symmetrical the entire way around. So this, this is going to be great for, you know, a pheasant tail with a hot spot, um, something like a prince nymph, a hare's ear with that hot spot, a tungsten bead, something that you don't have to worry about, that wing case, because this is it's going to be riding this way. You just want to make it that all around. This is that all purpose nymph. All right, some of the other materials I'll pull out. I'll be using some sparkle braid, just some simple sparkle braid. I'm not going to use much. I'm going to be using a gold color. This really seems to get hidden for this color of fly. I probably should be using a black, and I really I, I've used black in the past. However, the black really seems to get hidden with and there's already enough other stuff sparkling so I really you know I like when this fly gets wet you can see some of this gold really shining through there's gonna be some ultra wire just got a little ultra wire brassy size that I'll be using um, that I'll be ribbing it with it's gonna be black I will be using some rabbit strips so here's an example of the rabbit strip that I'll be using completely dyed black um, we're gonna be using some of these silly legs just some rubber legging nothing crazy here um, so we'll be using some of these. You can use them with uh, the flakes in them that really seem to shine. I'm not going to worry about going that crazy because, again, there's so many other things that are going to be, you know, shining, capturing the fish's attention, such as this. Um, you have a choice between some using crystal flash and some other types of materials. I really do prefer crystal flash um, for this at times. Um, you'll notice that, you know, this is a, a nice black color. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And again, just like everything else, it will really capture the fish's attention. And then finally, let's see if I can find everything else hiding around here. I'll be using a 6 aught thread, just unithread, nice 6 aught color black. Normally, whenever I have this many uh, materials that are the color black, I would typically stick with a black marabou. However, I'm going to go with this really cool maroon barred marabou for this fly. Um, this may not be the actual feather I'm going to use. I'm going to use one that's a little webbier. I believe I got it right over here. So it's probably going to be this feather. This will be one of the feathers that I'm using for this. Um, it's a really nice, you know, that has a little bit of that claret color in it. And I believe this color is really going to, you know, it, or I'm sorry, this color really seems to work out for this fly because there's just so many things going on with this besides that natural barring. Okay, so I showed you some of the materials. Um, I'm going to get to tying this fly, so let me get everything set up in my vise. Okay, it's time to tie this fly. You can see I have the cone already there, except if you notice, when you push cone forward on this, this jig style hook, they really don't set the way you want them to. So to start this fly off, I'm just going to get the cone out of there. I'm going to start by just tying in some thread right at that little bend. So I just want to get some thread locked in. And then what you're going to do, now the first couple times you're tying this, you'll want to just kind of experiment, but you want to build it like a nice little taper so that whenever you push this cone head, it will simply rest right up and you'll see a natural progression, a natural taper from the tip of that, tone head, that cone head to the, you know, to the front of this fly. So I'm just going to build this up just a little bit at a time, nothing crazy. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to go back a little bit and then come back up and just start to build it up just a hair to the point where whenever I push with that, that tungsten cone, it will not come over this little this little stopping point 
and you'll just see a natural taper in there. Pretty much close right now, so I'm just going to back my thread up to that, remove, remove it again, come back down a little bit, build it back up one more time, just double check that I can't really push it too much more, because if I do push it too much, I could just push that entire front taper forward. So I'm just going to make sure I, I just have enough room, and then I'm going to tie off my thread. So I'm just doing, you know, a quick little whip finish here. And just get that the thread out of there. Now, if you notice the tongue, the that cone head just popped back to the bo the bottom, and that's fine. This is where I might grab some head cement. You can use epoxy, really whatever is whatever it is that you prefer to use. I'm just going to completely coat coat this this thread that I already have on there. Remember, this is not necessarily a critical part of the fly. However, it will really make it, you know, kind of separate this fly. Now, once you have that completely coated, you're going to want to just push this cone head forward. If you want to use a little paper towel, just your fingers, and just wipe a little bit of the excess off, and then let it sit. And you can see that nice taper that's building up from, from this point up to the back of this, this cone head. Now, the one great thing about this hook is that it's a really nice short shank, and that's a really great thing, especially in a lot of the eastern rivers where I fish. So you don't have to worry about really building up a lot of materials. You can just get those materials tied in and kind of get them kicked out of there. I'm just going to push this forward just a little bit more, make sure I have enough room for everything. It looks great. I'm going to go back to my thread. I'm going to push it up against this, um, against this cone head just a tad. I'm not going to worry too much about that because we're going to have enough other materials going on here. All right, and then I'm going to just simply push the, get this thread back, build, you know, build a nice little, you know, base. Come back forward just a hair. This is where I'm going to tie in some of my materials. I'm going to tie in some of my sparkle, or I'm sorry, my um, my sparkle braid. Again, I'm using gold. Just got to lock it in there. I'm not going to let too much excess show because I don't want to have to worry about cutting this this off. So I'll just tie that in. I have my um, my black wire. This is that ultra wire. I'm just gonna tie this in. Again, it doesn't really matter which side you're tying it in. Then I'm just gonna go over these. You know, build it up just a little bit. You don't have to really worry about a taper. Whenever you're putting in this sparkle braid, you just want that that sparkle underneath showing through. So I'm gonna go back to the bend, maybe a hair more than I probably should. And that's fine. Then I'm going to advance my thread back forward. Bring this sparkle forward. You just want a nice, even body. You're only going to need a couple turns of this. Once you get to the front, you just got you know, want to finish it with just a few turns. Trim it close, though. Okay. And at this point, I'm going to put one extra line in. And then this is where you're going to take this fly and invert it right into your vise. Okay, now let me change around a couple things so you can see this. All right, so I have this fly inverted in my vise right now. This is exactly how this fly is going to be going in the water. Now, I, I already cut a strip of this rabbit. The strip that I cut... I pretty much, you know, I've tied enough of these flies so I know exactly what's going to be going on here and how long I should I should make everything. But when you first start tying this fly, you may not know that. So let me go into a couple details. First of all, with these rabbit strips, when you look at them, you're going to notice that the rabbit curves one way. You're going to want that curve to go back towards the tail of the, of the hook. So all those fibers will be going in that direction. Whenever you place this material on, think of it this way. This rabbit hide is going to go through the hook and it's going to be wrapped around to the base of that sparkle braid. If I would fold it back over, I would want the end of the hide touching the eye of the hook. So if, if you uh, have ever heard John Barr speak or read any of his books, John Barr will mention that after you get this tied in, he almost always lets it go long and then when he bends it back, he trims it. For a tire who's either doing these professionally or who is um, simply just wanting to finish them on time, you're going to want to just do a quick measurement, figure out approximately how long it should be, 
So you know, whenever you double, double it back over, it will be that length. So I just measure it against the shank, keep my finger about where this end will be. Then what I'm gonna do is right through the middle, I'm gonna poke it through. So it's through. Now, I can't leave it like that. So I'm gonna be removing the hook from the vise, pulling one side down, and I'm gonna to wanna to keep the hair side up. Let's see if I can show you what's going on here. So the hair side is now up. I'm gonna to try to insert this back into the vise so you can see exactly what's going on. And so I can see what's going on. So here's that hide. That piece has been inserted through the hook and I'm now gonna secure it to, I guess if you're, you know, based on how this is sitting now, it's going to be the bottom of that hook shank. Now the way to secure this is where that black ultra wire comes back in. Mine's been hanging over here, it's been attached to the, to the hook. I just wanna make sure that this, this rabbit is pushed against the butt. I'm gonna just pull some of these fibers forward. I'm gonna make a wrap with my ultra wire. I'm going to space it out, come back around, and make sure I get these separated, this rabbit separated. Got a hook on, got caught. And then I'm going to make my second. And again, come back up, separate all this rabbit. And my third, when I come back up, that's pretty much all I'm going to need. And I'm going to secure it in. So whenever I'm securing this in, I'm securing both the rabbit and that wire. Could I have secured that rabbit in first with just my thread and then brought it forward, um, the wire forward? Absolutely. There, the, absolutely. But I like to make as few wraps as possible. So you can tell, you know, I just did them both all, I secured it at the same time and then tied them both off. I'm gonna trim my wire first and then I'm gonna trim my rabbit. And just like before, I wanna trim it as close to everything else as possible. I wanna get really close to the body. I don't wanna waste a lot here. All right, let me pull this up just a little bit so you can see what's going on. Okay, it's at this point now that I'm gonna be tying in the legs, these rubber legs. Um, you can re, you know, you can invert that hook again if you'd rather invert it. At this point, it really is not that essential for me. So I'm just gonna grab my rubber legs. I'm gonna grab just two rubber legs and I'm actually going to fold them over the thread so that it's gonna look like four. I'm simply gonna tie them in. You can see what's going on, you know, what's going on here. I'm locking them in. And they're locked in right now, kind of like a Madame X. Well, I don't want them like that. So I'm gonna just secure them with a couple wraps. So there are two that are facing back already, the way I like them. They're long right now, I can trim those later. Then I'm gonna take the two that are facing forward and double those so they're also facing back. I'll hold those with my fingers, and you can also use lead wire or some type of a clip here if you wanna hold all these in place. And I'm just going to hold them with my fingers, secure them with a couple wraps. Perfect. Okay, we have a couple more materials. This is now where my, um, you know, that really that fish catching material pops into place. Um, you can use Flashaboo if you'd like, um, and I believe that's what John Barr recommends for some of these patterns. However, I really like Crystal Flash. It doesn't seem to be dominating with too much flash. Now, the one tricky part about this fly is that when you put this flash on, you want this flash completely around the head of your fly. So if you just simply tie it in at the top, it's not right. It's, that would look more kind of like a Clouser style in a sense. And you don't also, you don't want to tie it in in many separate spots. So there's a couple, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can tie it in by, you know, lassoing it around your thread, kind of like we just did with the rubber legs. Or you can try to spin it in like deer hair, and that works. Basically what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab a, a nice little clump of it. 
nothing crazy. I'm going to double it up. I'm going to trim that. So I have a clump, and again, this is a size 8 hook, about 1, 2, almost 3 inches long, That this clump of crystal flesh. I'm going to lasso it around my thread. When I do so, I'm just going to tie it in once. Right now, I can just look at it and say, that's a really decent amount. It sure looks like a lot at first, and it definitely is. I'm going to put in two wraps, then I'm going to start just pulling this stuff and wiggling it around because I want it going completely around this fly. So I'm just going to look around the fly. I'm going to use my vise a little bit, make sure everything's even the whole way around. Once I have it secured the whole way around, I'm going to take my left hand, kind of hold it all back, and finish locking everything in. Again, just a few wraps. You don't want to go crazy because you know we have a lot, we have a lot of stuff going on here at the head of this fly. Okay, and here comes you know the final part of this fly. This is where you're going to tie in some marabou. Just like that crystal flash, you want to make sure this marabou is tied in the whole way around the hook. So this is a spot where I'm going to tie in some marabou, and the length of the marabou it's going to go just a little bit beyond um, the bend of the of that of this hook. So I'm just going to tie in a little bit from the top. Just lock it in place. A couple wraps, no more than that. And then I'm just going to move my vise a little bit. Tie in a little bit on my side. Make it the same length as the first one. Hold it where I want it. And just, again, tie, lock it in place. Okay, so I have those two on. You can see the tail of my marabou really is moving. I did not do a great job of locking that in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get that, the butt end of that marabou out of there. Just so I know I have everything nice and secure. Then I can finish locking everything in once I can see what's going on. Alright, so let me get all this stuff out of here. Just got to pull it tight. Lock that in a little bit. And by doing so, I've just moved that marabou around the hook a little bit more, which is absolutely perfect. All right, I'm going to grab another piece of marabou. The same thing. I'm now moving more towards the bottom of this hook. Put three wraps, pull it tight, and then I trim the butt end. Trim that butt really close. And at this point, I know exactly how much marabou I'm going to need on the top. I could again invert my hook. I'm not going to. I'm just kind of like, kind of match it up with how much I put on the side, hold it over the top. Let me show you what I'm doing here. Let me lower this just a bit. So I'm holding that marabou on the top, tying it in, trimming the butt end out of there. Out of there. So if you look. Now whenever you start turning this fly and you're looking with your own eyes, what you're looking for are spots like right there. And I'll point this out to you. Whenever you can see your sparkle braid through and the fly is not wet, that means you have a, an area that you need to just add a little bit more marabou. So it's at that spot. I'm going to pull this back and I kind of put the marabou over so I know where I'm looking. And again, now when I go around, that, that sparkle braid's hidden. Let me, let me move this vise so you can see everything that's going on. I'm going to keep spinning it. And now, the whole way around, I can't see any of that sparkle braid. So everything looks great. Now to finish the fly, I'm going to go around, trim this marabou. It's now taking up a little bit of space around the head. So I really want to have as clean of a head as possible on this fly. Okay, I've, I've removed all that. I'm going to kind of bunch everything down with my left hand. I'm just going to put a few more wraps in here, just to kind of advance my thread to the back a little bit. Now I'm going to go back and grab a little extra piece of this rabbit. I'm going to pull some of the rabbit dubbing off. 
I'm going to dub that directly on to my thread. I'm going to use just a little, you'll use just a little bit more than you'll think you're going to use on this because there's a lot of stuff going on there. I'm just going to simply wrap this around and finish the head with a nice black rabbit dubbing head. At this point, I can complete a half hitch. If you've done everything correctly, it should fit directly behind that cone head. Okay, got my whip finished. I'm going to push everything back. Let me trim this. Okay, now let me invert this so you can see exactly what's going on here. Okay, let me move my camera just a bit for all of you. I have to zoom out just a little bit. Okay, so I'm not quite finished yet because if you look at this pattern, there's a lot of stuff going on here. The first thing I'm going to do is just double check my rabbit. I'm going to fold this piece over and compare it with the eye. It's a little bit longer than the eye, so I'm going to trim just the hide. I don't want to trim any of the fur. So I'm going to trim just the hide and pull that away. Now that's my tails to the perfect length. I'm going to look at my crystal flash. It should be about one and a half times the length of that hook shank. So I'm just going to go around, pull this crystal flash up, trim it. Trim. Trim, trim, okay, I see one more piece in there, oh, no I guess I don't. Alright, then finally I want to go through with the legs, and it's going to be the same thing with the legs. They're going to be somewhere around that, just a little bit, I like them just a hair shorter than that crystal flash. So I'm going to go almost just to the, maybe to the bend of the hook. So you're going to want to find the bend of the hook. And just go a little bit longer than that. There's two, three, and my fourth leg. Okay, so I have my legs trimmed. Now I have the finished fly. So this is the finished meat whistle, <coughs> excuse me, by John Barr. Let me turn this just a little bit so you can get an idea of exactly what's going on here. I'm going to turn the fly for you. The one thing you're going to want to look for is to see if you can really notice any of your sparkle braid. If you notice any of your sparkle braid, you probably want to cover it up just a little bit because that fly won't have the bulk of everything else that should be going on. What's great about this fly, when you look at it from this top perspective, you think, geez, this just does not look right. But you have to remember, with this style hook, with this jig hook that Allen Fly Fishing sells, it's going to be riding point up, just like this. Everything's going to get wet, and you're going to be really noticing that sparkle braid in the middle. You'll just catch glimpses of it. And more, more importantly, the fish will cut, just catch glimpses of it. Um, the one, you know, a couple, air, a couple more things that I'll point out. Building up this head is really crucial to this hook, because now, you, if you notice, I have a really nice taper in there. And at this point, I'll really go back to my head cement, add a little more to this, and add a little more to the front of this rabbit fur that I dubbed on at the end. The Crystal Flash really does a great job. Um, this rabbit hair tied on the hide is just excellent. It's just a fish catcher. And then finally, this maroon, that claret flavor, uh, not flavored, excuse me, the claret colored marabou is just an awesome color. That's a, a barred marabou. Um, I highly recommend just experimenting with the colors a little bit. Don't be afraid to just try rust color. That's really what John, John Barr recommends. He recommends the olive and the black. And though I absolutely do love the original, original recipes, I really, you know, will recommend all of you tires out there, you know, get some of these Allen fly fishing jig hooks and just experiment with this fly. All right, again, uh, thank you for watching this video. Um, I really appreciate all the comments, and feel free to you know, share any comments that you may have at the bottom in the comment section. This was John Barr's Meat Whistle. I'm Tim Camisa. Thanks again for watching, and um, if you'd like to ask me any questions or other comments, aside from leaving them on this, on this page, you can email me at tcamisa at gmail.com. Thank you, everybody.